So, uh, you know, we talked about making some videos, we talked about maybe interviewing some people, and I have that coming, that's totally on the way, uh, I think in the next couple of days or so, so be ready for that. However, in the meantime, I realized there may be some stuff as Christians in our faith um, that we don't talk about anymore. Not, I'm not talking about like the taboo stuff. I'm talking about uh, maybe the stuff that we just thought we had it all figured out. You know, we learned it in Bible school or we learned it in, uh, you know, whatever we did when we were kids. But we, we knew the story, right? We know about Jonah and the whale. We know about Moses. And we... But I think sometimes maybe we don't really understand what was going on in some of those stories and some of those instances. So today I thought maybe we'd kind of start a uh, video just on one of those topics. Uh, but first, it has been a long day and I need some coffee. So let's do some coffee first and then let's head to the office and maybe explore some deeper topics. Coffee just makes everything better. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel. So, uh, the thing I wanted to talk about today is kind of the story of Moses, the Israelites. Now, I know what you're thinking, man, dude, I've heard this all before. And you're right, you probably have heard it, but I kind of want to put a different spin to it. Uh, maybe we have overlooked, maybe you have heard this before, maybe you haven't heard, but I think it's significant. So. We know uh, during the time of Moses, or a little bit before that, that the Israelites had been enslaved for about 400 years. Uh, just imagine how many grandparents and grandparents and grandparents you would have over the course of 400 years. So they'd really kind of lost sight of who they were as a people. All they knew is, we're slaves, we get scraps, Pharaoh's God, he's king, uh, and this is just where we're at. Then Moses comes along and he's like, hey, let my people go, Pharaoh. And he not only has to convince Pharaoh and the Egyptians that it's time for the Israelites to become their own people and get back to what they were always created to be, but he also kind of has to convince the Israelites because remember, they don't know what it's like to be God's people. They just know slavery and bondage and rules and ugh. So uh, fast forward. They get out of Egypt, and we know the story, the, the Red Sea parts, and there's pillars of fire, and there's just all kinds of crazy stuff are happening. And uh, they finally get to a mountain called Mount Sinai, and at this mountain, uh, it is now time for God to kind of ordain his people, to uh, re-give them their identity, to make them who they were always supposed to be again. So the elders say to Moses, hey, we've seen what God can do. We've seen the, the parting of the sea and the pillars of fire, and we've seen the plagues and all this crazy stuff. We've seen God, but I don't think we want to see him again because we're afraid the next time we see him, he's probably going to kill us dead. Uh, so Moses, I know God has called us up to the mountain, but maybe you go. And, and when you go, Moses, just tell them like, oh, we're sorry we couldn't make it. And just tell God, we just want the rules. We're really good at being slaves. We've done that for about 400 years. We're good at following rules. So I know God wants this thing called relationship, but I think maybe Moses, just go get us the rules because we're good at following that. So most of you guys know the story. Maybe you haven't really thought about or heard that part too much. Moses goes up, he comes back down, and now you have the Ten Commandments, you have the law, you have the tabernacle, you have all of the things that Israelites uh, went through moving forward because of the Ten Commandments. Here's where I'm gonna maybe ring a few bells and, and, and you know, obviously, if, if you have a different perspective, uh, you know, feel free to comment, feel free to message me, whatever, but here's where I feel like I differ on the story. I don't believe, get ready for this, I don't believe that God's initial plan was the law. 
was the Ten Commandments. If you go back and read the scripture, now there's two accounts of the Exodus story there, and you have to read both to really get the uh, idea here. And I'm not going to flash a bunch of scripture up on screen for you guys. You go read it, study it, uh, present it to me, you know, let's have a good conversation about it. But basically, if you read both accounts, what you understand is God says, I want you to come up on the mountain, become a nation of kings and priests, what you were always supposed to be. Now remember, Priests are, uh, have always been in place to be the mediators between God and man. And so Israel's call at that time was to basically bring back the lost people back to God. That was the nation of Israel's call. They were scared. All they knew is slavery. All they knew was punishment. And so that's really what they wanted. That's what they asked for from God. Hey, Moses, you go to the mountain and tell God, we're just going to obey the rules because relationship, we don't get it. We don't understand it. It freaks us out. Just give us some rules. And so here we are. We got the Ten Commandments. Um, what I think is funny is, I don't know about you guys, I'm in my younger 30s now, but I remember, uh, and maybe there's this fight and debate still going on, but when I was coming up in school, there were all these people, Christians, fighting to have the Ten Commandments put back into school or on murals or paintings or whatever, you know. Now, hear, hear me, I'm not saying I don't believe God should be in schools. What I am saying is, I find it really funny what the Christians, at least in that particular movement, were asking for, and I wonder, if in a lot of ways we are still asking for the same movement and don't even really understand what we're asking for. Uh, we know what Jesus did through the cross. He broke down all the barriers so that we could have direct access to God again, that through what Jesus did, through his blood, now we are sons and daughters redeemed. We have identity. He's daddy now. And we shouldn't just be looking for rules or punishment because that's not how a dad a good father treats his kids. So I wonder when we were talking about these movements of, you know, bring the Ten Commandments back to the schools and, and do all this, uh, why are we asking for those things? Uh, I get the idea and the notion that we want to bring God back, but, but really, I wonder if a lot of times if we want the rules, if a lot of times pastors, churches, uh, people who go to church, if they ask for rules or they dole out rules in the shape of Christianity because we don't really understand we were created for relationship. We weren't created for rules, but yet even today in 2019, there is a large majority of Christians who are still just asking for rules and haven't really understood relationship yet. And so I think in a lot of ways, spiritually, we are still at the base of that mountain and God is calling us saying, I've ordained you to become kings and priests to this world. All you gotta do is come up to the mountain of relationship. That's all you have to do. But if we're still at the bottom of that mountain, thinking we are created for slavery, thinking we are created for rules and punishment, we'll never make it up to the top of the mountain and we'll never really become what God has called us to become. Now, I know this may freak out a lot of people with what I'm saying. And once again, please study it. Don't just take my words for it. Look this stuff up. But I think it points to a deeper problem. We were created for relationship, but if our Christianity is based on, this is right, this is wrong. My pastor told me if I did that, I'm going to hell. People on the side of the roads with signs are saying that those types of people are going to hell. If all we're doing is pitching God as a rule book for what we can and can't do, we are vastly underselling what Jesus did on the cross. We are vastly underselling what God had for the people of Israel on the mountain that day. And so I think it's been thousands of years and I think we're still fighting the same battle and it's funny, uh, in the book of Revelation later it says that God has called us all now through Jesus to be kings and priests. The language is still there. Since Mount Sinai 2019 and maybe a thousand years in the future, the call is still to become kings and priests of God's kingdom. So the question I ask to you is, is your Christianity a Christianity built around rules and kind of a slave mentality, or are we pushing through the nonsense that Christianity can be sometimes in getting back to relationship? Because what's awesome about getting back to relationship is once you understand that you were created for relationship, mercy, grace, and love, you'll start seeing other people like that as well. And you'll start becoming an advocate for mercy, grace, and love. 
rather than just being a Christian who tells people they're sinning and they're gonna go to hell and this and that. And I'm not talking about sin right now. I'm not talking about what we should and shouldn't do. What I'm talking about is that we can't have this old school legalistic mentality. We have to break out of that and understand we were created for relationship first. And if we attack everything from relationship, love, mercy, and grace, I think Christianity will be in a much better position. And if you want my two cents, I think that's why Christianity maybe isn't in the best position today because we forgot to climb the mountain of relationship and get back to who we are always created to be. Instead, we've asked for rules and punishment. So uh, there's obviously a lot more to that story uh, and I didn't want to give you guys like a whole you know, 30 minute spiel and this is probably too long already, but I hope you get the general concept of what I'm trying to say. Go study the Bible, talk to your pastor, talk to me, uh, and let's see if there's something to this. Let's see if there's something to to get back to relationship and not be so focused on the rules and the legalism and get back to who God is and who he said we are. You guys are awesome. Uh, if you have any comments or anything like that, please hit me with them. I would love to answer your questions. I know there's people out there that are probably gonna be angry at what I said, so uh, I apologize in advance, but this is all really to move the conversation and to push the ball forward. I believe something really big is coming in Christianity and I think it starts with getting our minds right first. So this is my attempt at hopefully trying to shift some perspective, maybe ring a few bells and let's just see where we land. I hope you ha guys have a great day. There's new content, new videos coming up soon. So I'll see you soon. Should we tell everybody about the Patreon? Oh, we should? Okay, well, I'll just put a link up so everybody can see it. Okay? All right, tell everybody bye.